And there we are, a little bit late, but uh, better late than never is what they say, too. How are we today, gentlemen? Uh, Andy, how's life treating you? Good, good. Yep, I'm down in uh, sunny Tauranga. It's lovely. Oh, sunny Tauranga. Very nice. Um, and, mate, listen, hey, uh, what, have you, uh, what have you been up to over the last sort of couple of weeks while you've been down in sunny Tauranga? Oh, busy, busy working as always, of course. Um, <laughs> but what I've, what I've shown a real interest uh, in is I thought, People talk about all sorts of aspects of safety and things, but I thought I'd, I'd go and look more historically, the historical aspect of safety. So I've started reading all the books on safety to see if there's, there's nuggets of wisdom that we've missed out over the years. And um, I'm particularly interested in a guy called Trevor Kletz, who's a bit of a, a, bit of a legend in the safety space. And um, I, I managed to acquire a, a, a weighty tome of his called Critical Aspects of Safety and Loss Prevention. And it's, it's, it's a brilliant read. I don't suppose many people will have read it because it doesn't seem to have been a bestseller or anything. Um, but what, what he's very good at is, is making sort of quite cool observations and summarising them quite neatly. So one of the greatest observations that he made, he was a chemical engineer, was um, what you don't have can't leak. Wow, that's very, very, um, that. very insightful. Yeah, I thought so. And yourself, Brendan, what you've been up to? Oh, mate, listen, um, not, a, not, a, not, a, not a lot, really. Um, I have actually, to be honest, I've, I've been trying a, a new thing, um, managing health and safety by flipping coins. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new thing, right? Like, you, you guys really should try it. I mean, how often, I, in fact, I think I actually want to, I want to coin the phrase, you know, for want of a better pun. Um, how often are you stuck with a dilemma where, whereby you like, do I do this? Do I not do this? Do I do this? Do I report something? Do I not report something? I tell you what, if you are unsure ever, I mean, listen, it's only safety, right? I mean, really, all you got to do, pull out a coin, uh, make a decision, heads or tails, flip it, land it, boom, you're in. I'm telling you now, you heard it here first, uh, managing safety um, via flipping coins. So it's the next the next best thing. Hey, Andy, um, before we move on to Des. Uh, and what Des has been up to, um, just sort of check um, your child. Last last episode, you're talking about um, trying to purchase some shoes uh, for your son. Um, yeah. Have you managed to find any yet, or what? Have you got them embroidered with the Safe Circus of Safety logo? No, I'm still. I'm, he can't decide which logo he wants on them. Oh wow! So, but just listening to what you've just been talking about, I think I have found a solution. You have. We just you need have. a three sided coin. coin. If anybody's got a three-sided uh, coin, let me know. Oh, well, there we go. That'll be that'll be something else we can maybe, maybe make the safety of circus three-sided coin. Now that's merch if ever I've um, if ever I've seen it. Hey, um, and again, listen, um, I'm, I'm not I'm not ignoring Des. I'm, I'm definitely not ignoring Des. I'm uh, going to be coming back to Des, but um, I just want to reach out. You know, this we, we, one, one of the reasons we do this is a um, for the three of us to catch up, yarn, and, and and have a chat, which is which is pretty cool. But um, what's what we've noticed is there's there's been a growing number of people um, that actually are engaging with our wee little community that we've set up online. Um, and after the last show where we um, well we had a disaster of a technology um, situation which we possibly nearly just avoided again, um, we spoke about capability in the health and safety sector. And uh, shortly after the show, we put up a bit of a poll, uh, which was interesting, and we'll, we maybe we'll talk about that um, a little bit later on. But I uh, really want to just shout out to uh, Mick Bates. Um, Mick uh, jumped on, on the poll and didn't just participate in the poll, actually had some really insightful comments. Um, and I'll just read through one of his comments. Um, this is a couple, and, and then there's a bit of banter backwards and forwards. But um, Mick's st statement initially was, um, you can't define competence if you haven't defined what health and safety sector is for. Now, Andy, it sounds like Mick's been listening to you a lot um, because you keep going about defining things. So, um, but hey um big shout out to mick and um thank you for joining in in the conversation uh now Des, um mate uh last two weeks uh what have you been up to I haven't really spoken much with you this, this last, since the last show yeah well i mentioned i didn't have much planned and it would be kind of business yes. as usual so I, I took the opportunity to actually research a bit more in the disclaimer space wow uh, and learned quite a bit Okay. Tra the traditional approach to disclaimers is just purely a compliance um, approach. And 
what I've found is that there's actually a new type of disclaimer theory among really? practitioners. Um, it's called disclaiming differently. And, and basically, no. instead of seeking merely to just comply uh, with your disclaimer, what they do is they seek the feedback from the end user and try and incorporate that into the disclaimer to make it more, um, you know, to, to offer more to the end user. Um, wow, and it sounds sounds innovative, Dave. Yes. Yeah, and so it's like I've I've kind of embraced this theory, and um, yep. you know, and, and I've taken a new view on on the feedback that I've been receiving from the disclaimers. And the feedback last week was that the disclaimer was potentially pitched a bit low, um, not very sophisticated, no. and a bit, you know, uh, pitched a bit low. Our listeners are grown wow, adults, that's, that's and disappointing. yeah, and and they deserve a level of sophistication and in their disclaimers, and I wholeheartedly agree. Um, so for this disclaimer, I've I've taken a more sophisticated and more cultured approach, um, and and who better I thought to model a cultured disclaimer on than the Bard himself? Uh, to disclaim or not to disclaim, that's a question for your lawyers. Oh God! So shall I launch into it now? Please, please do. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Pray take heed, noble listeners, as we embark on this auditory journey <laughs> of work's challenges and the specter of safety's attorney. In this auditory chronicle, wisdom and knowledge we do share. Yet for legal matters, expert counsel thou must bear. Laws and statutes like the pillars of a grand stage stand firm, guiding us as sage and prudent sages. Through it, though our words may be like songs oh. that do inspire, consult legal advisors lest legal troubles transpire. As workers traverse life's intricate play, let wisdom's counsel be thy guide every day. In the manner of Shakespeare's eloquent verse, let's navigate legal waters for better or worse. Legal matters first, we declare with resolute wow. might, guiding us through legal tangles day and night. Much like the scripts that Shakespeare would command, Navigate legal realms with counsel close at hand. So there uh, you have it. This. Disclaiming differently in practice. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> um, that that is that is my that is it. Uh, uh, listen, I think you've outdone yourself <laughs> in that one. Um, I'm I'm not sure if we've got to be concerned about any possible. Um, copyright infringement <laughs> but, but um i guess we'll have to um, have to take it from there right um wow wow i don't know what this stuff oh no we're back okay hey hey gentlemen um, hopefully you can hear me. Yep. Barely. Oh, not again. Here we go. Just so spin the wheel, Brenton, spin the wheel. Oh, okay, here we go. I'm back. Uh, you guys, can you, um, let me know when you can see the wheel. Yes. Good cool. to go. Okay, here we go. software mate um initial shock initial thoughts on the topic of safety software delay delay uh, can you, um uh, uh, do you mind elaborating on what you mean by delay uh get a system first then buy the software ah yes uh that old chestnut right no fair enough good that, that that's um that's fantastic 
Um, Des, uh, your initial thoughts, shock, concerns uh, relating to the topic of um, safety software? I agree with Andy. Um, get your system first. But the um, my main thought is that it's just a tool to achieve the outcome. It's not the outcome itself. So just because you've got safety software does not mean you're safe. What do you reckon, Brenton? Um, well, clearly not my forte, uh, <laughs> considering uh, all the technical challenges that I'm having. But listen, I, I think um, in the right hands, um, I think it's it's a good thing and, and, I, and I, I think the it, it provides a lot of opportunity uh, in, in our space and um, but in the wrong hands um, it, it can become a bit of a whipping tool uh, probably in my my initial thoughts um, yeah wow what a, what a topic um, great to see though um, and thanks Paul Shaw uh, for pointing out the irony because we've, <laughs> we've had a few technical software glitches uh, not only last show but it seems to be chasing me. And, and listen, gentlemen, I'll put my hand up and I'll tell you, I'll say it's, it seems to be all on, all on me. Um, and, um, so there's, um, thinking about safety software, I mean, what, what are your thoughts? What are your understandings? What are your, um, your concepts on it? Well, I've, I've, I've often hesitated to implement safety software systems and, and the reason for that. I, I get a lot of criticism for that because people say, oh, how can you, how can you possibly manage safety without a, a safety software system? And I would say, well, it's, it's only as good as the data that you're putting into it. And that wow. time taken to enter that data is still the same, whether it's into an Excel spreadsheet or whether it's into a safety software system of some sort, it's the same amount of time. So you're not saving time into data entry you're not changing the integrity of the data or you're changing is how you can manipulate the data and produce reports and, and findings. Um, and that's why I, I think that Andy's comment is very poignant. Have your system first because you don't know how to manipulate that data and, and get the report or the, the outcome that you want unless you know what your system is that you're trying to support with that. Yep. No, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that makes a lot of sense, uh, Andy. I mean, what are your what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I absolutely, for once, totally and utterly agree with with, with Des there. Uh, it's interesting that Keith Harvey just made a comment there. How can software do the task when the task is unclear? I think that's absolutely hit the nail on the head as well. Mm. Is that uh, people are often often sold this idea of you buy this software, then you will, it'll do safety for you. It's just completely untrue. And I think you know there's, it's a success of marketing over over common sense in many, many cases. But I absolutely agree. You, you should be able to run your system through an Excel spreadsheet. When that gets a little bit complicated, then maybe consider some software, but the fundamental principles, you should be able to manage safety through an Excel spreadsheet or even paper documentation. Wow. No, that uh, I can't believe. I guess it's um, I don't know what I'm more dumbfound by the um, the topic that's a landed and the fact that we're going to try to spend the next sort of thirty to forty minutes talking about safety and software, or the fact that you two actually agree with each other. Not only do you two agree with each other, but we're getting loads of comments in the chat, uh, and they're all agreeing with each other as well. Absolutely crazy. It is. I mean, maybe, um, maybe could we could we toss a coin to see whether it's a good thing or not? <laughs> Well, we're talking about tossing coins. Um, I guess this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of break I'm gonna break trend here, gentlemen. Um, I I I think actually it can help you with your systems and your processes. Like you don't need to have your documented systems and processes. And and in some some aspects, I'm gonna suggest that that possibly, um, you know, if it's some if if safety is a topic that maybe you're unsure about. And is a topic that you don't really know um, what your systems or processes are, or need to look like, or could look like, or should look like. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually throw it out there that that possibly um, using safety software, maybe one that's off the shelf, uh, a reputable brand, of course, um, can actually help you um, improve your, your your processes, which you may or may not have, can improve your tasks. Uh, if I mean, if you if you don't know. I guess where to start, or you don't know what it should do. Uh, by implementing um, safety software, 
I, I'm going to suggest that that maybe uh, it, it can actually um, help you write your systems and your processes when you actually have to start thinking about it. So um, I, I think it's definitely a topic, uh, um, a piece of a tool, a thing in our toolkit that as safety professionals, we really probably need to be, be getting around. But again, I guess that's going to come down to, um, to maybe another question, a little bit off topic here, gentlemen, but... But I guess in terms of um, your understanding of it, I mean, what is safety software? I mean, does it have to be, I mean, are we talking about a standalone package here? You know, there's a number of brands out there. And we're not about promoting brands unless they shamelessly throw money at us. But uh, I'm not going to put those brands out there. But, but there's, a number of, there's a number of brands, right, um, who make dedicated health and safety software. Um, what you've been talking about, Des and, and Andy, and, uh, and I'm seeing a lot of the chats pop up as well, is... Um, you know, maybe what is software? It doesn't have to be a standalone piece because I mean, you're talking about Excel spreadsheets. Is that not um, is that not safety software as well? I mean, by de by definition, Des, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's a that's a fair point, and I think maybe we should distinguish between software that's being created for the dedicated purpose of administering a safety system. Whoa, and... whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, um, let's ease up on the big words on a Friday morning if we could. <laughs> Goodness me! <laughs> Draw a distinction between that and just general <laughs> software. And, I, and I'm actually a big fan of the general software approach because it's not a straitjacket. Sometimes you need to change your processes, change the way you do things. Um, and if you have a dedicated safety software system that where the incident reports talk to the triple SP and the hazard matrix and, and all these different things interact with each, with each other, if you want to make a change, it's very difficult to do that. If you're just using Excel or individual tools, um, and I'm a big fan, and I haven't received a plug from them, but Safety Culture's iAudit as a product is an excellent inspection slash audit tool. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be just for safety, it can be for other things, but that really does streamline the inspection process and make it a lot faster than, than an Excel or a, a paper-based system. And if, but I would also say that that is not dedicated safety software that can be used for any purpose. It's highly malleable. You can you can adjust it to do whatever you want. Um, and I've I've yeah. used systems where you can't adjust things and you kind of straightjacket it in, into this yes. system. I, I guess that's the, I guess that's the key, right? You you want it to be flexible enough that you can adapt it. Um, now. Des, um, apologies. Apparently, um, I'm a bit harsh for um, you know telling you to stop using big words on a Friday morning. Um, my good mate Crystal uh, over in Canada kindly reminded me uh, who's live, who's tuned in, watching us live. Um, we've gone global here, boys. Um, reminds me that it's actually only Thursday afternoon over there. So, um, big word away, Des. Big word away. Um, uh, Andy, anything else to add before we um, jump into the next question that I've got for you guys? Um, I guess. It, it tends to, um, it, the application of safety software, in my experience, tends to make problems worse, potentially, um, because you end up being a slave to the software as opposed to slave to safety. And it's, wow. it's, it's that, it's, and I've, I've come across some pretty horrific examples across clients where it's just become so over, over, overtly complex that nobody uses it properly. The other thing that tends to happen is people buy a lot, buy the software for a significant amount of money, but then sort of skimp on the implementation and the training of it. Yes. And yes. Um, that, that yeah. happens a lot, I think, and therefore it never gets used. And therefore the software gets blamed as being not very good, but actually the software is perfectly fine. It does exactly what it says it does. It's just that the application of it was not invested in properly. Yeah. Wow. Some great insights there, gentlemen. Great insights. Uh, and, and I guess um, Keith Harvey's chimed in, in, which leads us into the next question. His comment so far is, how does safety software benefit activities at the coalface for workers? And I guess, Andy, I'm interested to get your thoughts a little bit around this. Um, the question that I had is similar to, to what Keith is talking about. Um, I guess I'm interested to understand, do you feel, though, then uh, high-level safety software um, has a place in safety vault? Um, and what, what are your thoughts on what that place is? Sorry, 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 Brent. Yeah, yeah, I just got just completely distracted by some really interesting comments coming through. Sorry, could you repeat the question? God, really? <laughs> okay. For those with clearly some attention deficit disorder at the moment, um, 
do you feel then, Andy, safety software has a place in safety role? Oh, absolutely. And if it if it had, well, hang oh, on, sorry, just sorry. Hang on, hang on. Right. And if it has a place, Andy, uh, what do you think that place is, mate? Uh, going off um, off Keith's comment around the fact, you know, how does safety software benefit activities at the coalface for workers? I think it absolutely has a place in a, a well defined um, system that's that's been developed and, and there's good understanding of what safety is across the organisation. And I think it's very useful for coalface workers in terms of, if it's done well, to access safe work method statements, to access uh, incident reports, incident recording. I think from that point of view, it's really good. And it can, if it's done well, be very, very efficient. And having sort of incident investigations link back to um, risk assessments, critical controls, all that sort of stuff, I think is incredibly helpful and it can be done very well. But it's a significant investment in a business to do that. And you've got to train people and it's got to become second nature to them. And I, I don't think in many cases that that bit of it is done particularly well. I think most of the software out there is really good. It's just not generally implemented that well. Wow, cool, awesome. Uh, Des, I mean, your thoughts. Um, so, uh, we, we, you know, I guess, do you feel it has a place then in, in Sacktable and, and what is that place? And I'm also interested to get your thoughts then around too. Um, I know you, you've you done a number of talks around documentation in, in health and safety. Um, I mean, this is effectively a form of documentation. So yeah, we're interested in your thoughts, mate. Um, what do you have to say? Yeah, two comments about that. One is that um, the, the safety software like documentation is probably only adding value if you're using it properly. Um, if you just have it sitting there, it's, it's, as, it's as good as a safety procedure that no one's ever read. Um, it's not doing much. The other aspect is sometimes it actually, and this is, doesn't seem to get discussed much when people talk about software, but people say, oh, it can, it, you know, people at the work face or the coal face can access things and, and they can write reports and they can do everything. Well, in my view, that's pushing the administrative burden out to operational mm -hmm. staff, which is not a good thing. It yeah, kind of yeah. adds to that safety clutter. I think if, if someone needs to report an incident, it shouldn't be dependent on them having to fill out a form on an app. It should just be simply, we've had an incident, it might be a text message or a phone call. Um, and then de depending on your response to that incident, you might then develop a, an incident report for, and the safety team might do that. Mm -hmm. I'm digressing a bit here, but the, the safety software like that has the potential to push the administrative burden onto operational staff. Well, wow. okay, no, that, that, that's some that's some great insight there, Dees. Um, what's your take on yeah, what's your I, take on it, Brendan? What's your take on that question? My Don't take, me repeat the question um, to you. <laughs> no, Andy, I'm actually paying attention to you. Um, uh, yeah, listen, I, um, I I am a a well, clearly, I don't necessarily have most a lot of luck with it. I am a a big a big fan of it um i am a big fan of safety software well i'm a big fan of software um a big fan of technology and i like to and i guess that's another conversation topic possibly i mean are we when we talk about safety software are we talking about safety technology and, and, and probably not but i'm a big fan of it all um i am a big advocate for its use um and i i think it does it does have a place but again not so much about understanding what your systems are. I don't think you necessarily need to understand your systems or your processes because I think a lot of people don't actually understand what their systems and processes are and or don't have um, systems and processes. I mean, Andy, you'd be the same, and there's, there's no doubt as well. How, how often have you picked up someone's procedure manual um, and they have worded it policy and procedure manual? I mean, first off the bat, those two things are not the same thing, right? So... So how the hell do you put that on the same page, right? But anyway, what then I find tends to happen is, is that the the, the policy um, that is supposedly part of the policy and procedure manual is is too big, it's too detailed. Yet the procedure part of the manual is is too broad and too high level and too airy fairy, um, singing kumbaya around a Christmas tree. Um, and, and so I think a lot of organizations actually don't understand their, their procedures whereby the safety whereby the safety software um, 
it, it actually it, it makes you it forces you to think step by step it forces you to actually um, think about what are the processes so if somebody enters something a who is that person that's entering that who do you want to be entering that do you want it to be your person on the call face um, do you want it to just be managers or whoever the case might be not only once you've done that it'll force you to think well what do you want to happen with that information where do you want it to go and that's a procedure right that's that's the step by step uh, process that a procedure should be. So I think it's got a huge place. Um, and we'll talk about some of the traps shortly, I think. Um, we, I've got a couple of questions for you still to go on this topic, but um, I definitely think it's it's got its place. And, and um, interestingly enough, though, I, um, you know, I've, I've obviously had a recent um, change in my role at work. And, and, I, and I think this question from Veronica really sums it up and also really helps me um, define where I think it sits in safety bill. Um, Veronica's question, well, she's she's come to us with a question, I guess, or, or to the group that's tuning in um, around, um, do you think uh, h and system should be linked to a HR system? Uh, and if yes, why? Well, Veronica and, and to all those listening, I think this is where I think it might, I feel safety software has a place in safety bill is your software in a perfect world will be all encompassing. It'll be linked, it'll be linked to your quality it'll be linked to your to your HR it'll be linked to your um, to your um, safety it'll be linked it'll be linked to everything and it'll be a complete management system uh, that that brings it all together so yeah I do think it's got a place and I think it's got a big place if, if again if used correctly um, there's I seem to have a frozen uh, and a really good image but I'm sure you can still all hear me Yes, we can still hear. No, perfect. Hey, mate. So, listen, there's. Um, oh, actually, no. What you know? What, I'll jump to Andy. Actually, Andy, um, what are your thoughts? Any pros around the use of safety software? Sorry, Des, passed you over, mate. Um, <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> if it's used correctly, absolutely, um, it can help with engagement. Um, it becomes one one place where everything is stored, which could be a problem as well. Um, and it can, it can, like you just indicated there, can increase consistency and accountability, which, which is, which is, which is always good. But the system's got to be right and understood, and it's got to be implemented correctly. Yeah, um, cool. Nice. That's some some good points there. There's what uh, I'll come to you now, mate. Um, thank you. Sorry, took, sorry, took a bit personally there. Hey, um, what are your thoughts, mate? Um, any pros uh, to this? Um, well, look, I I agree with Andy, but I I think it might also be worth considering bringing up a con with um, safety That's software that I also think that people don't talk about is when you've got people entering data into your safety system that is not, might be motivated by other reasons than safety, you sometimes get a repository or a database of information that could be used in a prosecution against you and, and mm. you know if someone writes an incident report out of frustration saying you know the company hasn't done this for six years and i've been asking them to do this and i've been asking them to do that and now we've had this incident and that's not evidence that i would want in front of a judge and, you know and I, I worry sometimes that a, a database of incident reports and near-miss reports mm. might actually be and I'm not talking about safety, I'm talking about sort of more legal liability here, might be um, setting you up for a bad outcome. Yeah, no, good good thoughts there, Des, and, and I guess that's the, the catch-22. Uh, and, and with everything, right, there's, there's, there's pros and, and, and cons, and, and great dovetail uh, into that. I guess we, we often, though, get caught up in the trap that we have to record all incidences, um, I guess, and, and is that why we think maybe people fall into that trap that they, they want to use software or Excel spreadsheets, um, depending on how we define that safety software piece uh, to capture the stuff? Um, yeah, which is, again, interesting. Um, yeah, I, 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 I tend to, to agree with you finally, Des, on this topic. Um, my, my thoughts are there's a lot of pros. Um, I think you can create efficiencies. You, I think there's, if you used correctly, you create a database or a, um, a repository of learnings that we can apply. And again, that's then using the information that goes into the software to help you uh, 
see where your issues are, determine where you want to put your time, energy, and efforts. If, um, but the, the con to that is the quality of that data uh, needs to be good. So in order to use it effectively, it needs to be good quality data, uh, which again, then that comes down to, as Andy said, um, I know this is surprising, I'm, I'm kind of coming full circle here and agreeing with both of you, uh, it comes down to the implementation and the training uh, and the rollout of that of that software and, and encouraging the people. But then on the flip side, I think there's also some thought around everything is a journey, right? Everything has um, a, a process. And, and I think for me, my mantra is um, you, you've got to start somewhere, as we have with this little uh, video cast thing that we're doing. And and once you once it becomes a habit, once it becomes a, uh, you've got people entering stuff into the system, that's the first part of the step, I guess, in my approach. And then the next part is working on that quality of that stuff. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, there's, you mentioned it, it could then be used against you, right? So you just gotta be quite um, mindful around how how we use it. Andy, any, any, um, any traps or any cons you can see with the use of safety software? Yeah, it was interesting. Paul, Paul Shaw, I don't know if any of you know Paul. Um, Unfortunately. He, he, he um, he says the way that most of these software platforms are set up result in workers, supervisors, and managers getting bombarded with emails that becomes a huge distraction. And I think that's absolutely true. If it's not, the system is not set up correctly, um, you just get emails after emails after emails. Close this out, close that out. Is this done? And, you know, accountability is a good thing, but it gets to the point where it becomes a huge distraction, I think. Yeah, no, fair, fair point. Fair point. Um, awesome. Hey, well, uh, these. Um, we're coming to the end of the show and um, some great great stuff in the chat there and, and some great conversations around safety software and potentially I think opportunity for uh, some further conversations around the space but um, yeah, want to wrap it up with your thoughts on the, um, on the topic of safety software? Yeah, I would and I think Keith Harvey has really summed up uh, my view with, uh, with his latest comment is G-I-G-O garbage in garbage out it's a safety software is as, only as good as the data that you're putting into it oh is that oh sorry i thought he was talking about lady gaga oh okay i get it gigo it's like um maybe we can make a song about it or something oh that's cool no nice um that's fantastic um although it looks like we, we might have uh, some interesting comments there you might need to jump in the chat at the end and, and reply to, to a couple of comments uh coming through here on on, on some of your, your statements but yeah listen i um to sum it up for me i think it's um if again you know we've all spoken about this repetitively if it's used correctly i think there's huge opportunity for it i think there's opportunity um from a learnings point of view there's opportunity from a um, prioritization point of view because the topic of safety is so big where do you put your time effort and energy and i think software used correctly can can assist you with determining that there's a I, I definitely think there's a it's really exciting and i know it's another topic on the spinning wheel of death but i think the um the use then of ai within that i think is really exciting and some, some great opportunities in that space but as we have identified, there's definitely a number of gaps that we need to be mindful of. Uh, and, and that comes, I guess, alongside our disclaimer for the show, right? Um, there needs to be, um, you need to be come into this uh, eyes wide open for want of a better, um, a better saying. So now really, really excited. Great chat, gentlemen. Um, there's, uh, sticking with you, mate. Um, Next week or next fortnight, I should say, uh, in two weeks' time, any um, any burning desires for you to land on the um, the spinning wheel of death? I think it would be pretty cool to discuss uh, WorkSafe in light of the recent White Island uh, developments, with uh, the yes. charges against the directors being uh, thrown out or dismissed. Um, I think it would be interesting to talk about WorkSafe and WorkSafe's role. And uh, and work safe effectiveness as well. Yeah, no, no, great, Des, and, and I think um, I, 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 um, I tend to agree. I definitely like that one, Pop. But I mean, it's not just about what, what's happening with White Island recently. Before all that, uh, that um, popped up in the media, there was talk about um, the capacity within WorkSafe as well. So, so definitely loads to talk about in that space. 
Um, maybe, I don't know what your thoughts are, gentlemen. Maybe if we get enough interest, we can do a special topic uh, on on that. That will be quite cool. Andy, um, what about you, mate? In the next fortnight, uh, any kind of topics of of excitement you'd like to land up on the wheel, mate? Oh, I'm hanging out for hazard and risk to come up. Wow. Old school. Old school. Absolutely. Let's talk about the, let's talk about the stuff that matters. It's the stuff that matters, hazards and risks, eh? Yeah, well, I mean, just hanging out for that to come up. It's not going to be a, a long conversation, mate, because isn't it all the same thing? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Depends who you ask. One and the same, mate. One and the same. So I don't know. You, you might just start doing some research now just in case um, it does land on it so you can help entertain uh, the, the crowd uh, for a good half an hour or so. <laughs> Yourself, Brenton, what are you what are you hoping that comes up? Well, oh mate, I like oh, I'm a little bit on Des's bandwagon. Really keen, um, really keen to have a chat about WorkSafe, um, where where they're at. However, um, I don't want to I don't want to you know have any favourites, and I don't want Des to think you know that, that he's got to carry me uh, every show. Um, so so so. so Sticking with the um, sticking with the safety software theme, I'd be really interested uh, to chat and get your opinions and thoughts on AI in safety. And it's it links in beautifully with what we've just been talking about. And the last few wheels, we happen to have have it land on very similar topics. So I do I do think the odds are in my favour uh, for it to land on um, on AI in software. Um, wow. Well, um, there we go. Not only um, we we also get in the crowd interested. So Veronica has jumped in. She maybe we need to add this to the spinning wheel of death if we don't already have it. A great topic uh, out there. Um, an episode on the role people play in health and safety would be good. Um, I think I don't disagree there. What do you guys think on that topic? It's death. worth exploring yeah. for sure. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I want to understand a bit more about what that meant but um it's worth talking about well i guess that's the great thing about about the show right we get to unpack it um and maybe veronica will will let you know if it, um, you're going to have to tune in and hopefully it lands on the wheel and and veronica can chime in uh andy what are your thoughts on that topic yep good good yeah i like it nice um i think there's, there's we could talk about that for a long time Actually. We could we could go on so many different tangents, uh, and I don't know whether this was keep throwing out a topic or whether he was just um, I don't know whether whether he's doing some arts and crafts in the background, but um, he's got their sticky stuff, uh, and I, I guess that would fall into the topic that we've also got on the wheel, which is around safety safety. Oh, maybe we don't have this one safety jargon. Uh, that'll be cool, um, like sticky stuff and and whatnot. Um, and oh yeah, there we go. Well, um, Matt Jones is chiming in, and there's he's he's all over you, mate. Um, suggesting he can't believe we spun the wheel. Well, th that's an interesting concept because I think that's what our whole show was based on. But as as Matt and Des have pointed out, there's so many interesting topics there. So hey, listen, I think gentlemen, your thoughts, uh, Andy. If people are really passionate about a particular topic and they we get a lot of feedback about a particular topic, what are your thoughts, Andy? Do we maybe do a special show on it? instead of spinning the wheel we could do i just we need to be very careful about <clears throat> what we talk about i think sometimes if it's if it's still live so to speak wow well i, I never thought i'd be, hear that but you, you sound incredibly nervous and co and cautious about offending people andy that's surprising no i'm not it's just it's all very legal stuff and i'm i'm no legal expert Whoa. And I think having read some comments on, on LinkedIn about the, the ruling, I think in my mind there was a lot of misinterpretation and misunderstanding from people. And I just hate to be part of that. Fair. Well, fair enough. But um, let's let's move across to our legal expert, Des. What are your thoughts, mate? Um, if people are really passionate about a particular topic, and I know it's, uh, currently it's Fakari White Island and the current media coverage around um, the director's charges and where they currently sit and, and how that's all played out. But I mean, what are your thoughts? Forget about that particular topic. Um, maybe just your thoughts on if, if we get enough interest in that particular topic, we'll do, do a special show on it. We could, but I think we should put the question to the people and run a run a bit of a poll and see and see if it's um, something that people want to see. Wow, cool. Yeah. And, 
and I think Andy, I think being being mindful of your thoughts on this because you know we're we're, we're a trio. It's not all about me and Des. Um, although we could bully you into something. Um, I, I think our approach to the whole show, though, is not around um, necessarily voicing our opinions. It's more about asking questions, right? It's more about exploring. That's true. It's more about um, gauging in on, on where things are at. And it's great to see, uh, on that note, it's great to see the, the, the chat lot up today, which has been absolutely amazing. And, and so um, I think it's just a good opportunity before I check in with you boys about your, your upcoming futures. I um, want to shout out to, a, um, to one of our members on our LinkedIn page, one of our followers, uh, because without, without our followers, um, while this is enjoyable with just the three of us, it, it adds to the entertainment, as you can see in the chat. Um, but a big shout out to Mark Cutforth, um, who is a recent follower of the Circus of Safety on LinkedIn. So if you aren't already aware, um, well, I'm not quite sure how you found this video cast, but make sure you jump on our LinkedIn page, the Circus of Safety, and check it out and join Mark Cutforth and, um, and a, a bunch of other people. Uh, that are following us. Um, Andy, yeah, next couple of weeks, mate, or anything exciting planned? Any kind of wonderful world of travel happening? Yeah, always. I'm off, off the South Island next week. And then uh, the week after, hopefully, I'm catching up with some legends of safety. What? Um, <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Well, there's... Um, what, I mean, what do you think being called a legend of safety? Because that, that seems to time in perfectly with the next video cast, right? Does it? It's um, it's humbling. Very humbling <laughs> and concerning at the same time. Well, I guess I guess we've got to be, um, we then have to be, we've got to be, if we're flattered, I guess, maybe one other way to look at it, um, but also concerned um, is what we think of Andy's opinion. Um, but well, maybe we'll leave that <laughs> leave that for, for another show. There's, mate, what are you up to in the next couple of weeks? Uh, again, business as usual, but I do want to do a bit of a shout out to the NZISM Construction Forum, um, hosted by Derek Cassidy. Um, he uh, put together a pretty good um, show yesterday, which was a presentation from Grant Nicholson, which talked about uh, documents in, and safety clutter. And it was a, um, good because it's something that we've been talking about and it's still a very topical issue. Um, so I just wanted to, to do a bit of a shout out. Yeah, no, good, and, and I'll, I'll fully endorse that as well. There's, unfortunately, I couldn't make yesterday's, um, you know, yesterday's session. Uh, the ones that I have attended have been great. Derek's done a, an amazing job trying to pull a, a bunch of um, people together and, and have some great conversations about things and, and to make some changes with, within the industry. And I see Derek was on the show earlier um, posting comments, so um, big thanks to him and, and the support there and, and great work to, um, great thanks to NZISM for for hosting those sessions, which I think are incredibly valuable. Um, I, I'm going to let you know a little secret, gentlemen. I'm about to jump on a boat. Uh, I've got a long weekend planned. Um, so I'm going to have to somehow get this show onto Spotify and all that before I get on a boat. So uh, otherwise, it won't be live until next week. So I will be incognito, uncontactable uh, for a couple of days, which is quite exciting. Where are you going, Davenport? <laughs> yeah man, i'm just getting the ferry um <laughs> backwards and forwards nice. backwards and forwards um uh there's a there's a there's a special on um you know one of those kind of uh one day dot code on nz websites where you could get unlimited rides to devonport and back um so that's me mate locked and loaded locked and loaded and then yeah i hope to uh, get a bit of business as usual going on but really excited about uh next couple of weeks to catch up. I've got to be honest, a bit of a highlight in my, in my fortnight, catching up with you boys and having a chat. So um, really appreciate that. Um, and I guess that, uh, just checking my show notes, that um, that brings us to an end, team. So big thank you. Um, massive thank you to all those jumping in the chat. I think it's been um, incredibly productive, a great topic. Who would have thought, right, safety software and how this has lit up the internet. I think the young kids would say we've gone viral, gentlemen. And um, so really exciting to see. Uh, take care, everyone. Thanks for joining in and look forward to uh, catching up with you in the next fortnight. Thanks very much. See you next time. Thank you. See you next time.